Hey everybody, I just wanted to show you this cool new cave design that I found. Uh, oh hey, uh, it's it's really cool and I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. I even found some diamonds. So you may have heard of Minecraft Error 422, a Minecraft creepypasta exe that corrupts your game. You know, it does all sorts of weird things, the world gets messed up, random blocks spawn, and this guy called the Entity chases you down. Cool stuff. Many people then took this format and we created it just with a different name. Like, I mean, there are a bunch of these where people just throw in a whole different error number and pretend like it's their own thing. They just do the same thing over and over and over again. Eventually, you would think someone would finally do something new. However, why would you bother to do that when you can just piggyback off something that works? Welcome to Pixels After Dark, and today we're going to be jumping into our second entry in the Poppy Playtime series. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry about that one. Hmm, let's see. What can I add? No, no, not that. Oh, I got it. Allow me to introduce you to Minecraft Era 437, a spooky Minecraft EXE that's basically just like all the other ones, except it apparently has a virus that interacts with the computer and causes some pretty odd occurrences. Yeah, you heard me right, a virus. Something so dangerous that even Google made me lower the security of my profile to download it. I had my geek squad of cybersecurity experts take a look at the file and they told me a bunch of stuff that I really didn't understand. They ran it through some program, I guess the code to run the game is disguised as another file. Other things popped up, I don't know, just some major nerd talk. I joke, but I truly only want to talk about things that I can confidently understand. And since this isn't a malware analysis video, I decided to go to the forms for the version to read the lore. Apparently, the presence of the Kane Mem virus is in the version, which if you don't know anything about that, can basically do this. Oh my. There's also some talk about a screen of death that appears that has a weird message. And if you run it through a Windows analysis, you can see a whole bunch of red lights dinging, screaming malicious content. However, in the end, I guess the only way to really figure it out is to play it. The wiki described how the longer you play, the more haunted and glitched the game gets. It sets a list of objectives to complete each day, so I guess we got our video. Play through the days and try and reach the final climax. Ugh, you know, I'll be honest, I'm kind of disappointed that there's no, you know, cliche creepypasta. I think we can make our own. I woke up one morning and was checking my emails. Typically, I get a funny Garfield comic from my grandmother, but today, I saw something that caught my attention. An email from Notch, creator of Minecraft. I would like to say I was stunned, but any excitement was quickly diminished when I saw the email. Attached was an installer for Minecraft and a video. What I saw, I could not explain. So allow me to show you. Hi, it's me, Notch. If you're watching this, I'm dead. <laughs> I recently tried to reclaim ownership of Minecraft as I was upset that they've removed Fireflies from the recent update. I love Fireflies. During my attempt, I was assassinated by Bill Gates and... I wish I could say I saw angels on the other side, but no, only fire, scorching hot fire, filled with demons, not the cartoon demons either, big, ugly, horny gremlin type ghouls. However, luckily for me, Satan was a fan of Dream Manhunt videos and offered to give me the opportunity to haunt Minecraft. And that's what I'm going to do. I don't know why I'm telling you this or how I'm telling you this. You know, they force us to use Yahoo down here. But try playing Minecraft. You may be in for a big surprise. I was terrified. Upon first opening the game, you'll see that the Mojang logo is glitched out and the original home screen will be converted to a corrupted screen. You can see that this version is based on Minecraft 1.3.2, however, they modified it a little bit. You can't sprint. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. If we click the options menu, all the values will move sporadically. This doesn't actually mean that our sensitivity and stuff are changing, it's just a texture that's supposed to make everything look odd and eerie. Time to start our first world. Okay, here we go. Oh, nope, oh, oh, come on, get me out of here. Oh, God damn it. What's this? Oh shit, can't close the game. <laughs> These stupid devs don't know about something called Task Manager, huh? Let me show you. Huh? Yeah, so basically you can't close the game normally. 
I use a program called Process Hacker to do it, and every time you die, you need to start a whole new world. Delightful. <laughs> actually able to successfully spawn on land this time and I immediately saw why I got so unlucky the first time. Lava is everywhere. I'm pretty sure they just swapped all the water and lava in the world but we're gonna ignore this and jump to our next most likely culprit, Notch. Mysterious plants are floating in the air such as grass and roses and my entire screen had a slightly annoying glitch effect. I couldn't see my hunger bar at all which made me believe that food was useless at 1.3.1. But then I started to die from hunger, which was unexpected. Oh, come on. No way I'm gonna die. No way. Yeah, I'm gonna die. The next and probably largest obstacle would be the occasional fire that would magically light under my feet. This would inevitably kill me, so finding water became almost a necessity to survival. I found a cliffside that was relatively safe and began to build my house. As it was said, the longer you go on, the worse it gets, and I soon started to see some hidden lore behind this game. The words, you shouldn't be here, appeared on my screen along with bright red pulses. Occasionally, I would lose control of my character and placing blocks at a very high chance to turn into other blocks. Nothing too bad though, so I went into a cave, gathered some iron as the wiki suggested, and made a bucket to have some water in case I was set on fire. Everything was going relatively well. I felt like dream maneuvering through this hellscape, but I wanted more. This alone wouldn't be enough to become a full video. It was just an ordinary creepypasta hack. It was then that I started to get a little more. Windows would pop up saying death and quickly delete themselves and gibberish began to flood my screen as error messages appeared. The hack was finally getting good and then I stumbled across a wonderful missing texture block. Hey, hey, hey black and purple, don't mind if I do. No, no, no way. No way that just happened, come on. What does this mean? Modded, probably not. My game crashed. My game crashed. From here, things never really got much better. I found myself set up in a base with a nice farm. However, nothing grew and animals were pretty much non-existent. So I eventually just died of hunger. In my next world, my controls locked and I inevitably fell into lava. But throughout the playthroughs, I found more cool features from the hack. My screen would occasionally pulse red again, except now the words help us, as the chat spammed out. My window would glitch and pulsate around, and finally after hours of attempts, I reached my limit. I was in a world about to reach relatively close to where I was in my first attempt, when I suddenly got a new glitch. A text box appeared that just said the words, hello. Cryptic, sure, so I tried clicking OK, but then nothing happened. Eventually I was able to delete the window and suddenly my screen was replaced by the texture of Herobrine's face. How original. However, while I was happy to see a new unique feature to this hack, this texture would not go away. It permanently filled my entire screen. Pardon my French, but I cannot get over how fucking pissed off that that made me. Another goddamn world call because of this stupid mid-level virus, whatever the hell you want to call it. What made all this wasted time so much worse is I was 90% sure I was playing an old version of the game. Screenshots on the wiki look different and more updated, so I felt like there was an improved version that I somehow couldn't find. If I was going to set another foot in this hack to try and find the climax of this virus, you bet your ass I'm going to do this right. I found a link to the creator's discord and saw the download link. Error 437 final version. I installed it, ran the exe, and son of a bitch. This bastard put a VM detection system in the final version of the game. For those who didn't infer, I've been playing these hacks in a virtual machine. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a virtual computer you can run on your own computer. I use this in case the virus actually is malicious so all my personal files and assets are safe and only the virtual machine gets damaged. In case things go wrong at any given point, I can reverse everything and set it back to its initial state. However, this goofball was actually kind of smart and found a way to detect if a virtual machine is being used and deny access to the game if so. They literally want to force users young children playing Minecraft to download this on their own machine. I feel like I'm playing chess with this fool and oh baby I'm the queen. See I couldn't find exactly where and how it was detecting the VM. However if I can't modify the game, why don't I just build the game myself? I got the official Pixels After Dark Tech Squad to extract all the files from the EXE for me and use only the game assets and DLL files to rebuild Era 437. I compiled it all into a jar file, ran it via command line, and voila! The final version of Era 437. <laughs> yeah! Fuck you! Let's finally beat this stupid thing. I spawned it and the game was entirely different. The glitches were choppier, random crosses appeared featuring gibberish lettering, 
and signs with words such as error, null, and death appeared all over my world. I finally felt fully engulfed in error 437. I found a little cave to make a base in and began gathering the essentials. Torches, iron, water, and even diamonds. Hunger was luckily non-existent in this version, so no need to ever worry about food. Things got a little bit spookier in this version, such as the famous Disc 11 playing randomly in caves, as well as a new addition called Death. What the fuck? Oh my god. Eventually, even Explorer.exe, the taskbar and everything on the bottom, got deleted. However, luckily my advanced computer knowledge and even more impressive crafting skills were able to conquer every challenge. My base was looking safe, well secured, and I never felt more prepared. Oh! Then things got worse. I found myself coming closer to death as mobs began to spawn more frequently in this version. Sickening nausea would be randomly applied and eventually someone messaged me. Hero Brine. My game quickly became more and more disoriented, with glitches and error messages upon every turn, everywhere I looked. I moved further and further, until finally, it all came crashing down. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Bill Gates, creator of computers, big computers. You have successfully exterminated Notch from our servers. Congratulations. As a reward, we are prepared to present you with 15% off three months of Xbox Gold. Epic loot acquired! <laughs>